Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now maybe you've heard the term root or rooting your phone or maybe an app that needs root access and you're not quite sure what it means. Well, let me explain. Now all operating systems have the idea of system privileges. That's a set of privileges that allow certain users or processes to perform tasks that are reserved for system administrators. You don't want normal users doing certain things. They are reserved for those who have the authority to do those things. Now, on some operating systems, this uh, system set of system privileges are fine-grained. There are many, many levels. But on Linux and most Unix-type operating systems, it's very black and white. You are either a normal user or you are a super user who can do just about anything. Now, uh, traditionally, the account for a super user on Linux and Unix-like operating systems is root. And that's where we get the term from. Root is basically a super user, the system administrator, who can perform any task. Now, the thing about root is that once you have access to the root account, you can do just about anything you like on the system. You can change the system files, you can change the system configuration, and you can read all the data that belongs to other users on the system. So if I'm on a multi-user Linux system and I have my email account and I have my personal data, root can access all of those, whereas normally I couldn't access what's going on in the account next to mine or another account on the system, whereas root can see and read everything. As it was once said, with great power comes with great responsibility. So of course you don't want to give root access to just about everybody. And therefore on a Linux system, there are a couple of mechanisms that exist to limit who has access to the root account. And they are called SU, which stands for substitute user, or SU do. Now SU or substitute user basically allows a process or a user to change their user ID to that of root. And when they do that, they gain the privileges of that root account. Now SU do is very similar. And what that does is it allows you to execute one command with a substitute root user. So in other words, it's kind of do as root or root do, but they call it SU do for substitute user do connected with that original SU command. Now, depending on which Linux system you are using and depending on how that is configured, there are different ways that the authentication occurs to make sure that only those allowed to do those commands uh, get the right to do them. So, for example, on a system that uses just SU, you need to know the root password uh, to get into the root account. On other Linux systems that use more the SU do command, then maybe you need to be an authorized SU doer and maybe you need to know a password, not necessarily the root password, but probably your account password. And those two systems mean that only those who have the privilege can execute super user commands. Okay, so that's the world of Linux. Now let's move quickly into the world of Android. Now Android is built on a Linux kernel and therefore the ideas of root and of super users and normal users exist on Android as much as it does on any other Linux system. Now, as you can imagine, Google do not ship Android with root by default. There is no root access for any apps because the moment an app has root access, it can change the system configuration, it can change the system files, and it can read all the data that's associated with any app installed on the system. But if you want to actually modify any system files or read the data of other apps, then you need to have root access. Now this can be a very good thing. For example, there is a very popular app in the Play Store called Titanium Backup Root, and that is a program that allows you to back up all of your apps onto an external SD card. Now it can only do that because it requires root access. And once it has root access, super user access, it's allowed to read all the data and all the files associated with any app on the system, including system apps. If it didn't have root access, it would not be able to do that. So there is a positive side to having root access on your phone. However, there's also a negative side. I could write a free game, I could put it up 
on a Play Store somewhere and on a non-rooted system, this game could just act quite normally. But when it detects that root is available, I could maybe bring up a message saying, please give me root access because I need to improve the performance of the game and it will happen if you grant me root access or please grant me root access so I can upload the scores or download an update or just basically a lie that convinces the user to give that app root access. And once it has root access, then everything on your phone is available to that app. Your PayPal account, your banking information, your email addresses, your email passwords, your, or anything else that you've got on that phone is available. And my little game could then start sending that information up to a server, which I could then collect in and use for whatever purposes I want to. So the fact that you have opened the door to allowing root access on the phone means that you've left a chink in the armor for people who want to write malware to get access to your data. So of course there is an argument, is Root a good thing or a bad thing? Those that like apps like Titanium uh, Backup Root, they say Root is essential. You know, those that are more security conscious who realize that opening the door to root access can open the door to security breaches say root is not a good idea. I wonder where you are in that debate. Now, before we go on any further, I want to tell you a little bit in a moment about how you get root on your phone. But before we go any further, I just want to mention that if you want to connect to me and talk to me about any of the subjects that I cover in my videos, then there is a link here that you can use to go to the Android Authority forums and I check that daily and I'll connect with anybody there that asks me a question about the videos that I've been doing. So now let's move on. How do you get root on your phone? Well, basically there are three different ways. Your phone doesn't come with root. Occasionally there might be a phone that comes out of China that has root access built into it, but by default, the vast majority of phones do not come with root access. How do you get it? Well, one way is you can just unlock the bootloader and install the uh, super user SU binaries that need to be installed on your phone, and that's quite easy. Another possibility is to install a version of Android that has root built into it. For example, Cyanogen Mod has root built into it already. So if you can find a version of that for your phone, you can follow the instructions on their website and you can install uh, Android on there with root pre-baked into it. Or the third possibility is you need to exploit a vulnerability in uh, Android that gives access to root temporarily so that then the various binaries can be copied on to your uh, phone. So just let me tell you about that third one for a second. Basically, every program in the world has bugs in it. Even the programs that send that they write for NASA that send spaceships up, they all have bugs in them. There's nothing we can do about that. We haven't found a way of fixing that yet as mankind. So all programs have bugs in it, including Android, including Windows, including Linux, including iOS. Everything's got bugs in it. Now, sometimes those bugs can be serious and allow people to get into the system through a way that they shouldn't be allowed to get in. Now, that's called a vulnerability. Now, when a vulnerability allows for a program to get root access when it shouldn't have, okay, then people can use that to gain elevated privileges. Now, what happens is once a vulnerability is a theory, look, we found this bug in this program, and there's a thing called an exploit, which is when someone actually takes that theory and turns it into real code that can actually use that vulnerability. And many, many root systems, actually what they do is they take a bug in the uh, Linux kernel or in the Android system, and they find a way to get elevated privileges through a way they weren't meant to, through a bug somewhere, and then they write an exploit. Now normally, of course, when Google finds out about these exploits, when Google finds out, or Samsung finds out about them, they patch them up. In fact, it's interesting because in the current news at the moment, the FBI are trying to get access to an iPhone, and I read this morning that uh, they've already gained access using a third party who showed them a way to get in there, and Apple's response was, please tell us what is that vulnerability, because they want to fix it so it doesn't appear in future iPhones. And this is an ongoing battle. Those who follow security issues, this literally is happening every day with all the operating systems across the world. So one way to get root is to exploit a vulnerability. Of course, the question is, do you really want to run software intentionally on your phone written by somebody who's going to intentionally break your system so they can get elevated privileges? Now, they say they're doing it so they can install root for you, but are they? Or are they doing something else? That's a matter of trust and to trust somebody you've never met 
who lives halfway across the world, that could be quite difficult, which certainly is for me. And so there you have it, my quick overview of what root is on Linux, what root means to Android, and how you get root on your Android phone. Well, my name's Gary Sim from Android Authority, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. As I mentioned earlier, there is a place over on the forums. You can use this link here to connect to me over on the forums. I'll read that at least once a day. If you've got anything you want to ask me about the videos that I do, please come over and have a chat with me there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter and on other social media accounts. Also, there are the, the comments here below, both on the Android Authority website and on uh, YouTube, where you can tell me your experiences with Root, what you think about Root, which side of the fence do you stay on the Root, non-Root argument. And finally, please do stay tuned to AndroidAuthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.